Okay, in this video, I'm going to begin exercise 3D of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. We're on page 86, and the question is number one. Now, we're beginning, I suppose, the tough questions. These are just for honours students only. Now, I think with these, to be honest, it's like, it's like a dog. Often their bark is worse than their bite. So they look awful, but they're nothing, nothing new. So in front, I have, uh, I've started this, but I'll read the question first. So it says a projectile is fired with initial velocity u cos alpha i hat plus u sine alpha j hat. A plane p passes through the point of projection and uh, along a plane p passes through the point of projection and makes an angle beta with the horizontal. If the particle strikes the plane p at right angles after a time t and we're asked, we're given an expression to show. So the point I'm trying to make here is that this is it's phrased differently but the information is the exact same as we'll say question 10 on exercise 3c or any of the questions on exercise 3c where we're dealing with inclined planes so I've drawn the x y plane in blue the x prime y prime plane in in black and I've drawn the initial velocity vector u and I've drawn the three the three angles were given alpha uh, or alpha and beta and I made an angle gamma I don't I don't like uh, dealing with, I don't like calling this angle here uh, alpha minus beta. I prefer just to call it a single one and I'm going to call it gamma. The last thing and the only bit of additional information we're given here is that we're told that the particle strikes the plane P, which in this case is our X prime, at right angles. Alright? At right angles for here. So hopefully you'll be able to deduce from that that V sub X is equal to zero. V sub x is equal to zero. Now, also, the unit vectors I've changed them. I'm uh, from my reading of the question, the uh, the book says the unit vectors of this direction, and I'm not using those. I've changed them because it's just easier to work that way. I don't want to work in the x and y axis. So look, let's just uh, let's just fly fly straight into this at this stage. I'll do well. I suppose I'll do this one um, sh uh, very we'll say in depth, and let the rest of them just let's roll on from there. So if we resolve u. We get u is equal to u cos gamma i hat plus u sine gamma j hat. Now, of course, the book says alpha, but it's the same thing. It just depends. He, he took it from the x-axis. I took it from the x-prime. So the same thing. And we're not giving any other information. No, we're not. If we resolve the gravity vector, let's resolve the gravity vector. So there's gravity. We, we go perpendicular to the y-prime perpendicular to the x prime, put them at right angles, direct them in those directions there, and this is g sub y, and this is g sub x. We call it g is equal to g times the, uh, that they're not vectors, excuse me, g times the sine of beta i hat, plus g times the cosine of beta j hat, because this angle bisects this angle beta at a right angle, therefore they, they are the same angle. And uh, that's that's all the information we can take from that. So let's do our UVAST. Is there anything else we need to do there? No. So just bear with me now one moment. Alright, so we knew this was u cos alpha, u sine alpha, u sine, oh, not u, g sine beta. Yes, it was alpha, alpha is correct, but so is gamma, because we're taking it off a different plane. And g cosine and beta. So let's get the velocity vectors. V is equal to u plus at. So this becomes u sine gamma plus g cos beta t. u cos gamma plus g sine beta t. All right. Then we get the ut plus a half at squared for distance. u cos gamma t plus g over 2 sine beta t squared u sine gamma plus g over 2 cos beta t squared 
Now it's time to look at the what we're asked. We're asked to find the time when the particle hits the ground. So of course we're dealing with when v or excuse me s sub a, s sub y is equal to zero. It's after hitting the ground. It's after coming to the end of its motion. So s sub y equals zero. And we know that's equal to u sine gamma. That there's a t missing there, of course. And u t plus that. Yeah, there's a t missing there. Plus g over two cosine of beta t squared. So this of course is a quadratic and I'm missing my t again. This is a quadratic or a polynomial of degree 2 whereby we have 0 times t to the 0. So the easiest way to solve this one isn't by the formula but rather by taking out t. So we get u sine gamma plus, or we'll, we'll just put in that number at minus 4 point, no, I know I'll leave it, I'll leave it, I'll leave it because I I know what the answer we're supposed to be getting is times the cos of beta. Alright, so where you have two things multiplied together to give you zero, then one of them must be zero. So t is equal to zero, or. Geez, I'm missing my t's. Why am I doing that? I suppose I'll just best slow down. So we get minus 2u sine gamma over g cosine beta. That's equal to t. So if you look at your answer on page 86, you'll see that is the answer. Of course, the, the sign there is different, and that's, as I've said, probably 50 times at this stage. I define gravity equal to minus 9.8. The book defines minus gravity equal to 9.8. All right, so yeah, we have the same answer, that that's correct. Next thing I have to do is deduce that 2 times the tan of alpha minus beta times tan beta is equal to 1. So in my notation, what I'm trying to prove is that 2 times the tan of gamma times the tan of beta is equal to 1. And how we're going to do this is by using the other bit of information we were given, in that the particle hits the, the, the plane or the x prime uh, axis, we'll say, at a right angle. And as I said already, that means that v sub x is equal to 0. v sub x is equal to 0. Alright, so let's rub out the piece of information we don't need at this stage. Now, if v sub x is equal to 0, yeah, you can see it there, v sub x is equal to 0, we have that's equal to u times the cos of gamma plus g times the sine of beta times t. And that works out there for it. We get t is equal to negative u cos, um, well, no, sorry, take that back. We don't want that. We, what we're going to do is we're going to plug in the value for t that we had here. We are because we know the time at which it's the ground, so that's the that's the um, that is the time we're going to plug in. So we get zero is equal to u times the cos of gamma plus g times the sine of beta. And when we plug in the t, t is negative, so we're going to get a negative sign here, and it's going to be two u sine of beta or sine of gamma over g cos beta like so. So the next thing we're going to do is divide across by u cos gamma. Now why do you do this? Well if you look at um, if you look at the answer you'll see well, I suppose let me rearrange this and then you might be able to see why I'm doing this. U cos gamma minus two u and that becomes tan beta, tan beta sine gamma. Now, if you look at tan, is there, yeah sine gamma, that's correct. That's correct. So this looks similar to what we're given in the book because we're given in the book two times the tan of gamma, or two times the tan of beta. That's right. Yeah, two times the tan of gamma, the tan of beta. Uh, is equal to 1. So look, if I divide across here by u cos gamma, this will turn into 1, and then the cos and sine will give me a tan over here as well. So we're going to get 0 is equal to 1 minus 2u tan beta sine gamma over u cos gamma. And look what we have here. We have the u's cancelling, which we want. We have the, this becoming a tan which we want as well. So 
So let's just put that straight in. Tan gamma. And if we look at that, that's, that is the answer. So we get 1 is equal to 2 times the tan beta tan gamma. Where, of course, I'm saying that, uh, that gamma is equal to alpha minus beta. All right. So if that's the case, then we have the same answer. All right. So that's good. And by the way, it, it also should convince you that, that my sign convention is correct. Because uh, even though I had a negative g up here, we got the exact same answer because the G's started cancelling out and it didn't matter thereafter. Alright, so we're, we're doing okay. The next part of the question says that if alpha minus beta, which I call gamma, is equal to pi over 4, find in terms of U and G the range of the projectile along P. Okay, so range. Well, actually, before I talk about range, we'll just go back up here now. Okay, so the first thing is, if we say that gamma is equal to pi over 4. Well, where is pi over 4? So quickly, I'm going to just look at the unit circle. We have 0, and we'll say 360, 90, 180, 270. Or you could say that we have 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi, where 90 degrees is equivalent to pi over 2. So if we are at pi over 4, that means we're half 90, half pi over 2, and we're at 45 degrees. So we're saying that in actual fact, gamma is equal to 45 degrees. Alright, so let's go back to what we had a moment ago. We, had, we said that, we said of course that 2 times the tan of beta times the tan of gamma was equal to 1. But we know what uh, gamma is now. We know that gamma is equal to 45 degrees. So we're able to get beta as well. Alright, so let's do that. So we have tan beta is equal to a half times 1 over tan gamma. All right, so if you plug out, pull out your tables, your maths tables, and on page 13, you will have tan of 45 degrees equal to 1. So this becomes 1. So we say tan beta equals a half. Beta is equal to inverse tan a half. And inverse tan is the same as just to show you arc tan. So just if you ever see that, inverse tan is the exact same. So just, I want to have a look if there's any function on page 13 that has inverse tan a half. And the answer is no, there isn't. No, there isn't. So the thing is I have to pull out my calculator, which seems to have disappeared. I'm going to have it now. So shift tan for inverse tan, 1 divided by 2. Oh, what did I do there? Shift tan, 1 divided by 2, 26.56 degrees. So we know that beta... We'll say 20, or we'll say 27 because it's, it's almost there. 27 degrees. So we're asked, asked to find the range of the particle. So let's go ahead and do that. So we go back up to our UVAST. Now that we have pretty much all the information we need, and the fact that I've rubbed out a good bit of this. Alright. So we want to find the range. And the range is given by uh, S sub X when the particles after hitting the ground. We worked that out already. We had we had uh, we had shown that where do we show it? We had shown that at t at t equals two u sine alpha minus beta, which was gamma of course, uh, over g cos beta and I had a negative sign and we were told that we worked out that the particle hit the ground. So let's just plug this into S sub X and see what we get. Alright, so we get S sub X is equal to U cos gamma times T, so there's a negative sign there as a result, times 2U sine gamma over G cos beta plus G over 2 
times sine beta. Now t squared turns out to be 4, u squared, sine squared, gamma, over g squared, cos squared, beta. Now that's, that is a mouthful, there's no doubt about that, that is a mouthful. Alright, so let's just plug in the bits and pieces that we know. Okay, so I'm just going to pull over my, my log tables again. So we know that cos of gamma, so that's the cos of 45 degrees, is 1 over root 2. The sine of gamma is also 1 over root 2. And the cos of beta is the cos of 27, 27. Or, yeah, 27, so the cos of that is 0.89. Do the same over here, we had sine beta, so that's the sine of 27. Giving us 0 0.45. We have sine squared gamma, that's just 1 over 2, 1 over root 2 squared, so that's a half. And this turns out to be cos squared, so we need, we need square 0.89, and we get 0.79 like that. So after this it's just an exercise in using your calculator. So 1 over root 2 times 1 over root 2 is a half multiplied by the 2 so they all just die like so. So you get negative u squared over. So 1 divided by 9.81 divided by 0.89 turns out to be 0.11 and this, you of course, when you put in the, the uh, when you put in g, uh, look what after happening here. When you put in g, the, the the negative sign goes away. So we have 0.11 u squared plus. I don't want it in terms of g, didn't it? No, I think of it. This wanted in terms of g. So just multiply that by 9.81. Sorry, now I'm after just making a bit of a bag of that now. Minus 1.12 u over g plus. Over on this side we have 0.45 multiplied by 4 divided by 2 divided by 0.79 and you get and divide that by 2 again to so get g u squared times point five six. You get that there. Now we're getting a bit messy now, but the, that's the way the algebra rolls. So essentially what we have here is uh, u squared over g times 0.56 minus 1.12u over g. So just let me check this now. That's, sorry, that's a u squared. So we're actually able to add these. So we have 0.56 uh, minus 1.12 give me minus 0.55 u squared over g. And of course that's a positive number because g is a negative number. So I just want to check this with my uh, with the answer I have here. I have root 5 divided by 4. 0.55. Yeah, that's the same answer. So I just did a small bit messier. I'm sorry about the fact that my, my algebra is a bit all over the place. Especially when I start dealing with big things like that. Anyway, look, thanks for watching. Please pass down to your friends and subscribe to my channel.